Welcome, my name is Błażej Kotełko. And my name is Monika Audia. And together we work at Microsoft engineering team that develops Business Central here in Copenhagen, Denmark. Today in this session, we'll talk about improvements in our integration with Power Platform. Business Central is well connected with Power Platform already. And we will talk about Power Automate, new features that we uh, delivered this wave. We'll talk about Power Pages and a few other uh, areas as well. Several tools uh, are part of Power Platform, starting with Copilot Studio, Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, Power Pages, and several uh, supporting technologies, Dataverse, AI Builder, and connectors. Connectors are very important because those allow you to connect to different systems. Yes, exactly. And we have more than 1,000 connectors built in already. And of course, those include the Business Central connectors as well. We'll start with our integration with Power Automate and the improvements that we made uh, in that area. Business Central is already uh, well or nicely connected with Power Automate. It allows you to build automations and, and, uh, and different workflows uh, in different categories, approval flows, automated flows, and, and even custom actions based on Power Automate. And we have a nice um, single entry point, single UI to start building flows uh, with Power Automate, starting from with the, within Business Central. You can work on approval uh, workflows. Uh, so you think about a scenario where you approve documents using Teams or Outlook. Uh, you can uh, work on automated flows that run in the background, for instance, processing, processing some emails, pr processing uh, invoices coming from different third party systems. And you can think about building an action that is based on a flow, for instance, sending an, an update to a customer using uh, email or, or uh, some other means. That's right. And from this wave onwards, we don't need feature management. This is the default view that we will get. So the single entry point will always be available. Yes. And whatever you choose, uh, whichever option you choose, you will end up uh, looking at different templates and the templates that we have in our, our catalog. And in, the, in that spirit, we have improved plenty of, of areas in, in our experience, in our templates. And the first uh, thing that you will notice is that we have right now improved the approval uh, workflows. Uh, and that means we have right now added an ability for Power Automate to access data from Business Central for approvers and pull it into the flow. Uh, you will see that in a demo in a moment. We have also improved the workflows and the templates uh, based on environment and company. So this is right now sent from Business Central to Power Automate. And I think the best way is to see it in a demo. Yes, so let's see what improvements we have made with approval templates. So let's assume the scenario where we want to do an approval setup for sales orders. So let's just go ahead to the sales order card page. And here under the automate menu, we can see the single entry point that Blasi just mentioned. And this will be the default behavior. All of these will open the gallery of templates under the appropriate category. So let's just go ahead and create the approval flow. And now we can see a list of templates that are available for sales order approval. I'll just go ahead and select one of them. And you can see that it is figuring out all the connections that are needed for this flow. And here are the new improvements that we have made in this wave. So as you can see, this is only asking for approvals title and not the environment and the company or for that matter, even the approve who the approver is. How is that possible? Because from this wave, we are actually sending all this information from Business Central already. So we are defaulting these parameters depending on where you are running the setup from. So in this case, the environment will be Sandbox, for, for example, and Cronus Company. And the approval will be honored from approval user setup table. So let me just go ahead and create this flow and add an appropriate title. So now the flow is created. So we are now in Power Automate, and we can see the flow that we just created. And as you can see, this is the same flow that you might have seen in previous releases, but now we have made some improvements. For example, we have added this new action called Get Approver, which is the action that is responsible to dynamically fetch the approver of the requester of the approval request. 
How do we get this information? We get this information from approval user setup table. So let's just see how the setup table looks like. And this is how the setup looks like. So for example, in case of Megan, Gradia is the approver and so on. So this table will be honored by the action that we just have introduced in the approval template. And these are the new changes. No more parameters and approver is also fetched from BC. Super. Can we see that in action then? Yes, but after we introduce AI in the flow. Super. Let's uh, switch back to the presentation then and talk about uh, AI. And in this way, we added a little bit uh, of that logic into our approval uh, templates. And you will see that in a moment in a demo. Uh, but what is important is, is to mention that AI Builder uh, is a, one of the components in Power Platform that include, introduced special actions that includes GPT logic. You can use those actions to build any flow uh, of your choice, but we have used them all for templates uh, related to Business Central and to, to business scenarios. We will be adding uh, later in this wave several templates, starting from the ones that you, that you see on screen, that include GPT logic. And the uh, interesting one is actually something that um, enhances the approval, uh, approval of sales orders where uh, uh, Azure OpenAI GPT action can summarize the sales order. So let's see that in action. So in this demo, you are going to see a new template that we have introduced that uses the GPT action. So let's just see how it looks like. So under the approval flow, we can see that there is a new GPT action uh, template. And for the sake of time, I have just followed the steps and created a flow already. So let's see how the flow looks like. So this is the flow that uses the GPT action. And it's similar to the approval flow that we have seen before, but now it also introduces a new action here uh, that creates the summary for the sales order details using GPT, using a prompt. So what it does behind the scenes, it actually takes the sales order header and sales order lines and creates a summary that helps approver decide the approval status for the request that is being made. Let's see this in action. For this to work, I would like to request Blaje to act as Megan and send an approval request. Okay, so here I'm acting as Megan. I'm on the list of uh, sales orders, opening uh, the second one. And I can see that the sales order has a couple of uh, lines here and uh, uh, request approval action. So I'm using the request approval action to request approval from my, from my admin. I'm the approver for Megan as per the approval user setup. And I have been working in Teams now. So I got a notification that Megan has sent me a request. Let's see how the request looks like. So I can see that the request is for the sales order. And then there is a very nice summary generated by GPT Action that tells me all the details that I need to know about the sales order before making the decision to approve or reject this request. It tells me not only the order number, but who, who the customer has been, where is the address of that customer, what were the lines, what was the price of each of the line, and so on. And that too in simple, easy to understand natural language. So I understand this is the valid request and I'll just go ahead and approve it. And that's how simple it was. Thank you, Monica. So as you have seen in this uh, amazing demo, we are giving you additional templates using GPT technology. It will be later in the wave. Uh, the moment you're uh, listening to this recording or viewing this, uh, this video, you might see those actions or those, those templates already in your uh, Business Central uh, template gallery. But there will be more of those coming later uh, in the wave. And what is important about Power Automate templates uh, is that you can edit the flow that is created uh, as, as uh, output of that template. You can add a little bit uh, different logic uh, according to, to your requests. You can also change the, uh, the prompt, uh, for instance, that is used in this GPT action. Uh, if you want to do a different summary uh, of, of the sales order, as an example, and so on and so on. This is really, really powerful and, and, and opens uh, additional uh, possibilities for you uh, to extend Business Central with, with GPT. All right, let's talk about uh, additional improvement in our connector. This is a new action. 
uh, we have a new action in the connector which is called find one record. And uh, it might be a bit confusing, but currently we already have a, an action that is called find records. Uh, that action is already available and it's very popular and it's very powerful. Um, but it has, um, it has some challenges. So first of all, you need to understand the OData query syntax. Not everyone is, uh, is so familiar with, with this, how to find specific data. And it also returns always a collection of records, even if only one record is what you requested. This is a bit problematic if you're building more complicated flows using Power Automate. So let's make your life easier. We are introducing a new action that allows you to find just one record uh, with a friendly user interface, friendly settings, and that record is retrieved together um, in one go. So imagine a very simple scenario where we would like to build an action in Business Central that uh, sends uh, a sales order, a latest sales order of a given customer to your colleagues uh, via Teams. And of course, you can build it right now using Power Automate actions uh, in our connector. But with this new Find One Record, it is much simple, isn't it, Monica? Yes, let's see how simple it is in demo. So here we have the flow to send the latest sales order for a given customer. And it's a very simple flow because now we have added a new action called Find One Record, as Blasha just explained. And this action actually allows to find the latest sales order given on the customer number that we have selected. You can add multiple new conditions if needed, and you can also select which order to use for a given field. So you can say it's either ascending or descending for, for example, a postcode and so on. And this was the new action. Let's see it in running. So we are in the customers list now, and we have the action to send the latest sales order, which is promoted. So let's just go ahead and use this send the latest sales order for Adatim customer. And what this will do is actually, it will allow me the option to run the flow behind this action. So now that I've clicked run flow, I'm expecting that it will find the last sales order for edit term and send the adaptive card for it on Teams. Let's see how it looks in Teams. So here in Teams, I can see that the card has been sent for the last sales order for Adaptum Corporation. That's how simple it was to create the flow with this new action. Let's talk about a few other updates in our connector. We have made some additional improvements as always. We have added a way to default the API route in our actions, make it even easier for you to create uh, flows. We have updated some tooltips. We have made the triggers available in the new Power Automate designer, as you have seen in some of the demos. Uh, and one other change that we want to talk about is that we have hidden the V2 actions, the old actions that were available in our connector before. Uh, and that uh, is important for all of you who might still be using those V2 actions in your flows. Your flows will continue to run. Is that correct, Monica? Yes, Plaza. The existing flows that use the V2 actions will continue to run. But we have, of course, a plan to deprecate V2 actions fully in, in, the, next, uh, in the next year. So please uh, edit your flows and change them to the current set of actions, which are V3 actions. Yes, and it's very important to note that this has nothing to do with V2 APIs. This is only about V2 actions in the connector. We are not deprecating V2 APIs. This is a very good point, Monica. So maybe we should talk about the difference, a little bit of history and what those V2 and V3 actions are in our connector. So V2 actions, as you can see, the old V2 actions that are currently hidden, they used only the old APIs, the V1 APIs from Business Central. They were limited to set of APIs provided by Microsoft only. The current V3 actions, the actions that are currently uh, the only ones, uh, the only choice for you actually, uh, when you're creating flows, are very flexible. Uh, you have this new field API category where you can choose the category. And uh, of course, you have APIs coming from Microsoft, the standard V2 APIs, as Monica said, V2.0 APIs actually. 
uh, but you have also custom APIs, uh, various APIs coming from Microsoft, from partners and so on. Uh, and as well, uh, on top of that, also the endpoints that are needed for workflows. So plenty of, of options to choose from. And this is the future. This is what you should be using going forward. Yes. In fact, we have plans of deprecating V1.0 APIs. OK, that is even uh, better in terms of messaging. You guys need to switch to V3 actions and start using the new APIs and start moving forward. Let's talk about a few other things that we have uh, worked on in this wave. We have actually for Power Apps a new sample for uh, allowing you to build a scenario. I have actually this app loaded on my device here. This is a sample app that you can take from GitHub and show uh, to your customers. It's a, a different way of selling a scenario where you are selling coffee machines using mixed reality where you can measure a space and so on. You might have seen the demo uh, of this app uh, that, we, uh, that we did on one of our conferences last year. And this, um, this sample is right now available for you to download. We also are working right now on linking Dataverse environments to Business Central environment. This new feature is already available in Business Central Admin Center, and you probably have seen it in our release plans. It allows you to select one of the Dataverse environments uh, as a designated one and linked. And we already are uh, using that or honoring that also in our Power Automate setup. Yes, if the Power Automate environment that you have linked to Business Central is not the default one, we actually use that one as the default when the user has not done the Power Automate environment setup in Business Central. We also show this in, for example, Dataverse assisted setup. And it will be also seen whether it's linked or not in the Power Automate assisted setup. Thanks, Monica. Another area that we need to talk about is Power Pages and our integration with Power Pages. My colleague, uh, Sandy Vinarco, has another session in this event when he is explaining all the new stuff that we have delivered in this uh, integration uh, currently in this wave. So I would very much encourage you to tune into that recording. Let's talk about one more important feature in our uh, integration that is Copilot in Power Automate. We are making your life, life of creators, even easier where you can use natural language to create automation. And that feature is coming as preview later in this wave. We have a separate recording in this event where we talk a little bit more in detail about this particular feature. So please tune into that one uh, when you're interested. We also would like to talk about our integration with Copilot Studio, one of the tools from Power Platform family allowing you to build Copilots or bots and that is already integrated with Business Central through our connector, through Power Automate actions, and also through plugins that are available in Copilot Studio. We will be covering more about Copilot Studio and our integration uh, in the coming events. Uh, so please tune in to more news about our integration with Copilot Studio. And I think at the end of this uh, recording, we need to mention that there are a couple of additional sessions worth uh, to watch. As I mentioned, the uh, session about Power Automate and Copilot, which, uh, uh, which we recorded together. There is also a session that talks about integration with Dataverse that uh, my colleagues recorded. And that mentions the virtual tables technology, also very important for Power Platform, uh, for Power Platform integration. There is also a session uh, from Kenny that talks about updates in our documentation, and that also mentions uh, integration with Power Platform. Uh, worth, uh, worth checking out, of course. And as always, all the general uh, Business Central resources are available at aka.ms slash bco. Uh, all the other links that you see on screen, and uh, nothing has changed there. Please go to ideas to submit new ideas, talk to us uh, using Yammer, or tune into one of our open uh, office hours uh, meetings that we organize every uh, couple of months for Power Platform specifically. And I think that will be it from this uh, session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.